And I said, you can't have uh, the white guy that's never been in, in the black neighborhood to the hood or right. who's not from the hood or has no idea it doesn't relate, how it the doesn't economy connect. works here and what the real troubles are. You can't throw that man in the situation to talk to people because I'm not listening to you from the gate because you don't relate. I don't relate to you. He's learned how to receive blessings and how to avoid a lot of the curses that his community may have been raised up in. And so because of that, he's become a beacon of hope and encouragement for a lot of people in our communities because he's showing here an example on the biggest podcast in the world that you can make regardless of where you come from, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of your socioeconomic status, regardless of the people that you grew up with, you can make it if you buy into the fact that you need to educate yourself about money. So a few years ago, we had Kevin Hart as a special guest speaker, did a stand-up performance for us in front of our entire company in August. And uh, a couple months later, we also played poker with him. It was a celebrity poker tournament. We were raising money for charity. And I had a conversation with Kevin Hart at length about his understanding about personal finance. Sadly, it never got captured on tape. To some extent, many of the financial concepts and his understanding about money came out playing poker for charity. And I'm wondering what the consistency is here with this conversation with Joe Rogan. As many of you may or may not know, Kevin Hart's a big advocate of financial literacy. I believe one of his sponsors is Chase Bank. One of his biggest mistakes with money came when he had a huge tax bill with the IRS. And uh, without getting too much into it right now, let's take a look at this interview with Joe Rogan. Yeah. Are you always like that? It's this. It's the things that I look at that are so easy. You're not just positive, though. You're like crazy ambitious. That's the thing that For always sure. gets me about you and The Rock. For sure. It's like the ambitions off the charts. Like, I know you're rich as f By the way, how many guys know outside of what you see on Instagram, what you see on social media, how close uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is with Kevin Hart. I mean, these guys are bantering with each other. These guys are going at each other, competing with each other. And it's a good competition. It's a healthy competition. It's a healthy competition of who's going to outwork who, who's going to outlast who, who's going to outstrategize who, who's going to... Listen, do you have a friend like that in your life that whatever endeavor they got going on, they're always willing to step up their game and them stepping up their game makes you want to step up your game, I hope you have that type of person in your life. That will force you and encourage you very quickly and deeply to increase your financial literacy. Like mm -hmm. when when do you think you got enough? You don't have enough. There's no there's no enough. I don't have enough because it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. So question for you. What is enough for you? Financial freedom is defined by a lot of people saying, I want to slide my credit card, so therefore I don't have to worry about sliding my credit card again without being declined. Okay, fair enough. But what is financial freedom to you? What is financial independence to you? And financial independence, very simply, is you have more money coming in than you have going out. Sounds like an easy concept, right? But here's the challenge with a lot of people. Because they got a lot of money coming in, guess what happens to them? Their eyes get bigger. Their tastes change. They want more things. They want to expand more things. They want to be a bigger giver to a lot of things. So therefore, whatever they got coming in is not enough for what they want to do in terms of spend or contribute or whatever they want to put out. This is not enough. So, of course, you got to ask yourself, how much is enough? And I don't think Kevin here has an answer for that because he's still enjoying his rise to the top and seeing new mountaintops. So, you know, when, when you put a cap on it, you're, you're putting a punctuation to it. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the ambition comes from seeing what's out there that can be obtained. See, oftentimes people, they reach whatever they think is a pinnacle of financial income. They got their checking account balance. They got their credit card payoff. Awesome, very good. They bought the house. Okay, so question you guys to ask yourself is, what's next? Kevin Hart's like, what's next? What's next? What's next? Because when you're at the top of your current level, guess what? If you want to grow, if you want to succeed, you want to be an example of success for a lot of people around you, guess what? You find yourself now at the bottom of the next level. And when you succeed at that level, guess what you then find yourself at? the top of that current level, but also at the bottom of the next level, if you choose to grow. We have a saying here in personal finance, it's either you're growing or you're dying. You choose which one you want to do. What I found is, here we go. As a young black guy from North Philadelphia, the biggest problem with, the biggest problem within our community is knowledge. We don't know. In Hosea, the book of the Bible, Hosea says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And yet at the same time, if you look at the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 8.18, it also says that God has given us the power to create wealth. 
And as Kevin Hart is experiencing his celebrity, his stardom, he's growing. He's accessing a new network. His, his reach is expanding and he's meeting more, pe more people and his opportunities are continuing to open. Debt, debt is welcomed because it's celebrated. That's all we know. Yeah, hey, nah, I'm gonna get that credit card. I'm gonna that credit card up and <laughs> it is what it is. They gotta figure that out. I ain't got it after that. Yep. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm getting student loans. They gave it to me. Then after that, it is what it is. I'm figured it out. There you go. And I'll put a cable bill in your name. You put it in my name. We're going to switch it up. Whatever. They do it. Let's just put it in. The By the way, how many guys graduated high school and you didn't realize you had a cable bill in your name? How many guys graduated high school and you had a cell phone bill in your name? How many guys graduated high school and realized that you had bad credit without even knowing what credit is all about? That's due to financial literacy and the way the system of things in America run. So that's why literacy, education, knowledge, exposure to how money works real time needs to be had in junior high, high school. But yet there's no bill outside of one in Florida that just uh, got passed by DeSantis. But overall, in the rest of the United States of America, financial literacy is not a required class or required curriculum for you to graduate. And yet it's the number one thing that we all deal with when we graduate to whatever job or career we go to. Somebody else's name. It's welcome. The hustle is welcome. The knowledge of banks and what you can do or can't do is, is you don't even get it. Zero. Because you go to check cashing places. Yep. The reason why you go to check cashing places because I don't want to go through that shit with the banks. I don't trust that. Go right there to check cashing places. Let me get mine. Let me get mine now. So there's a lot of fees that come from check cashing stations, even though there's a convenience of you taking your, your paycheck, you take it over to them, they cash it, but they take a fee from whatever your total amount is. Same thing too with your tax refund. They're going to take a fee from cashing your check now versus having a banking relationship. Like, how can the banks help you? A lot of people don't realize how important a banking relationship is. I'm saying banking. Banks necessarily aren't required, but banking is. In other words, the buying, the selling, the lending of money is very important. The knowledge isn't given. So it's not till you obtain that knowledge and understanding that you go, oh, shit. Oh, this is why you put money up. Oh, this is, this is how... You increase versus decrease. Oh, this is how you earn on your money. Oh, wow. I can gain wealth by investing in what? The stock world is what? How many people partake in the stock world? Yeah, I think there's a stat out there. I think, uh, um, uh, I think a majority of the 1% of income in America own 57% of the stocks. Let me repeat that one more time. I believe there's a stat out there that the 1% wealthy in America own approximately 57% of all the stocks out there. So they understand investing, but yet those that are working hard for the money, working jobs, are working hard for their commission checks, they're not allowing their money to work for them. They're working hard for their money, but their money isn't working hard for them. So if you want to get financially literate, you got to put your money to work for you because you're going to learn a lot by putting your money to work for you because you want to make sure that you ask certain questions. For example, I was doing a business deal today this afternoon, and there's things I didn't know about this particular business endeavor. But based on some of the values and premises I learned from other business deals I put together with some tough questions to ask up front, how to not get burned, I, what the red flags are, is because of experience. And so for some of you say, so how do I do this? How do I save? How to put my money together? Surround yourself with somebody that is experienced. And then you start asking deeper questions. Just don't do it. Try to do it yourself. Don't try to YouTube and do it yourself. Don't try to TikTok and do it yourself. Surround yourself with somebody that's experienced, that's been there, done that. So therefore, you get some real-time experience with somebody in proximity to you. And is there a part that isn't necessarily gambling? Is there a low risk part? These, this not the it's information isn't there. Right. So it's not till I got to a certain level and a certain group of people where I got it. And now that I got it, I want to give it. So now I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it to the people that I know need it most. And for me, that younger generation of black people that don't understand the cool thing is in financial longevity. And there's a report out there by Prosperity Now called the Racial Wealth Divide. And in that report, it says that by 2053, black wealth will be down to zero. Latino wealth, a few years later after that, Asian American wealth, so on and so forth. By the way, we put a link here to this report. I think it's very important for everybody to see where wealth and lack of financial literacy is in America. And so you can do something about it today. Not in the now. It's not in the moment for jewelry, not in the moment for the car. It's in the longevity. It's in building so at the end of the day, you can say, look at what I have. Look at what I worked for. Look at what I have that's mine. Yes. Monopoly is real, but you have to have the financial understanding. 
And I, I, I teamed up. I got chased right now. We're doing something called financial fitness. Okay. Where it's just about me educating people on money. Okay, I think this is about how to chased. manage money, how to how to be smart with your money. But it's coming from a person that fucked up money. I didn't always understand it. I owed in taxes before because I didn't understand it in the beginning. Yep. I had bad credit. I, I think you were saying at one point that his whole tour, I think it was that Laugh at My Pain tour, he was in debt with the IRS half a million bucks. And practically everything he earned on that tour went to go pay his back taxes. There's somebody want to mess around with, man. It's the IRS. I mean, did you see in the movie Pursuit of Happiness where Will Smith was pay, playing the character of Chris Gardner? He thought everything was on the upswing, everything was coming back. He just sold his bone density scanner in that movie. Next thing you know, he can't pay the hotel that they're staying at with him and his son, Chris Jr., because the IRS leaned and shut down his personal bank account. If there's one thing when you're making money, you cannot mess with the IRS. They'll find you. Credit cards wouldn't take me because I maxed out, whatever. I've been there. I've done it. Thank God I was able to fix it and get on the right path. And now that I have the knowledge, I want to give it. Because you simply don't know. It's awesome. So when you say the end game, the end game is getting to a point where I've taken all the knowledge that I've been able to get over these years and really applying it and providing family wealth. We just came back from a conference in, uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. So we're coming back from Orlando, stopped in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, I was very encouraged because there was a group of uh, young 20-year-olds, uh, insurance agents, that just got involved in the insurance business. And I was so encouraged by them because they may have been watching our content and they wanted to meet me after the conference. And, and they started asking a lot of questions. I'm just, I'm just so excited to see the younger generation having access to these tools of YouTube, of these videos that in their 20s, you realize in your 20s, you're gonna screw things up. In your 20s, you know you're gonna mess up your financial situation. The best thing you can do, just like these guys were doing, is they started asking questions. What tips do you have so therefore you don't screw things up? What should we be doing right now? What should I think about in my relationships? What should I be doing right now with my income, my finances, my checking account, my, my insurance, my own retirement account? What should I be doing? How can I not screw things up? So therefore I springboard my 30s into a different level of financial elevation. So. I love what Kevin is doing here because he's learned that through his mistakes, I mean, laugh at my pain, that once you go through something, man, you're a better person by sharing that with other people who are willing to listen and learn to show them how to navigate and avoid a lot of these mistakes that he made so therefore they can have a better life. When it's all said and done, the last name Hart is going to mean just more, a lot more than just, just think of legacy. comedy. You heartbeat Productions, you got Heartbeat Digital, you got Heartbeat Ventures, you got Heartbeat Real Estate. There's so many things that the last name Hart will be attached to. You sell real estate? Kevin Hart doesn't sell real estate. You invest in real estate. real estate. I, don't I like sell how it. you talk about yourself in the third yes, person. Yes, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I don't sell it. I, I buy it. But the right? reason why is because... Investment. Investment. Yeah. yeah. But, but as you get older, you learn this. You learn it. And, and you know, it's such a thing where you talk about um, black versus white. You know, a lot of people do that. And, and yeah, by the way, have you ever noticed that uh, there's different ways that black versus white versus Latino versus Asian handles money? And the weird thing that I've experienced in my life is I learned a lot more about money from Jewish and Mormon people. Uh, my mentors have been Jewish. My mentors have been Mormon. Why? Because they're just entrepreneurs from the wiring, from the from birth, from kindergarten, first grade, junior high. They're already talking about personal finance. They're already talking about entrepreneurship. And rightfully so. Like, there, there is racism. Racism exists. I'm not unaware of that. But there is a high volume of it that's, that's non-existent to people that are good people. And when you can merge yourself with good people and follow the paths that you see that these good, successful people have taken, you then become a part of a world and group that nobody expected you to be in. So for me, I now have the position to do that and take all of these relationships and all this knowledge and take it back to the people that need it most. This reminds me of a proverb in the good book. It reads like this. Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The name of the righteous is used in blessings, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. Now, Kevin Hart's a comedian. On stage, yes, he's a chattering fool, but the business aspect of his life He's learned how to receive blessings and how to avoid a lot of the curses that may, that he may have been raised up in, that his community may have been raised up in. And so because of that, 
He's become a beacon of hope and encouragement for a lot of people in our communities because he's showing here an example on the biggest podcast in the world that you can make regardless of where you come from, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of your socioeconomic status, regardless of the people that you grew up with, you can make it if you buy into the fact that you need to educate yourself about money. I like to share. I don't want it all by myself. Now, are you doing this in the financial stuff? Are you doing this in videos? Are you like releasing not videos? in videos? No, like, we're, how, we're how starting. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to start financial fitness. Like I said, with Chase, J.P. Morgan Chase, um, Jamie Diamond, very good guy, uh, Tashanda as well. They're they're help leading in charge and just saying how can we get to the people that we feel need the financial information the most. How about, how about how, hey hey Chase? Since you're the leading the charge on financial literacy, uh, why don't you open up? To, and you're having Kevin Hart as a spokesperson, once you make sure that the lending guidelines are fair all the way across the board, how do you make sure that people understand credit so therefore they get jacked on interest rates unnecessarily simply because they don't learn about credit score early on in their life? How can you help the common Joe in America that's not Wall Street? How can you help Main Street? Yeah, I'm glad you got Kevin Hart as a guest, as a spokesperson, but financial literacy is more than just that is really about integrating into our school system, integrating into our communities. How do we get to know what the rich people know about money that the multicultural middle class can know to as well to get them to the next game? Why is it always hidden? Well, I'm glad that uh, for those of you watching this, you're watching the Seven Figure Squad because we're go going to decode a lot of this stuff as we launch more videos. So I said, put me out there. Like, awesome. let's, let's he's, go directly he's to He's using the his consumer. celebrity so from to get people to colleges, pay attention. Uh, from high schools, um, senior classes, junior classes, going out and talking to people before they go into the next stages of their life about the things that you should know. Before so you're going to speak to them? Is yeah. That what you're <clears throat> and just so. share personal information. Are you going to put this stuff online? We see f financial, by the way, Kevin Hart, salute. Salute to what he's doing. However, financial literacy is more than just one person taking charge and speaking at a classroom one time. It is an ongoing thing. Financial literacy is like a language. For example, if we ask you to live in Japan for a year and you don't know anything about how to speak Japanese, what's more effective? Us giving you Japanese classes one hour a day in high school and so therefore at the end of the semester you can take a Japanese class and test and see if you passed Japanese class? Or we send you to where I was stationed at in Okinawa, Japan, and drop you in the middle of Japanese speaking people, drop you in the middle of that language, and nobody else is speaking English. So you're forced to learn the intonations, the, the words, the mannerisms of that language. Whatever language, whatever you're learning, French, Russian, Japanese, Chinese, Spanish, German, you name it. If we immersed you into that environment, that's when your language starts to change. That's when you adopt another language. Teaching financial literacy in schools, and the, the more I reflect upon it, it's not gonna really help unless we immerse people in that environment. The more we have people out there in our communities immersing people in environments to get them around a certain language, to start speaking a certain language, that's when financial literacy will then take hold. There's an amazing board of people uh, that, that are just figuring this out and the best way to go and do it. And I said, you can't have uh, the white guy that's never been in, in the black neighborhood to the hood or right. not from the hood or has no idea it doesn't relate, how it the doesn't economy connect. works here and what the real troubles are. You can't throw that man in the situation to talk to people because I'm not listening to you from the gate because you don't relate. I don't relate to you. But throwing somebody in a situation that's lived it, yes. that's been in it, yes. that's been f***ed up in it, yes. made it out of it, and is now it. coming back to help. Right. right. It's a different ball game. 100%. And that's what I want to be. Let me ask you a question. For those of you that's in the hood, from the neighborhoods, when a friend of yours starts investing in real estate, starts a business, do you support them? Why don't you support them? They were bold enough to start a business, whether they do hair, whether they have a restaurant, whether they sell insurance, whether they sell real estate, how come you don't do business with them? But yet you do business with other people that are strangers, they're not from your community. Why do you do that? Here's what I learned from the Jewish and Mormon community. When somebody in the Jewish community makes money, everybody makes money. When somebody in the Mormon community, everybody makes Mormon community. Why? Because they do business with each other. They support each other. 
Yes, they understand that the product and service may not be at the best, but that's a launching point to improve that product or service. In the meantime, they're going to support that person. They're going to uh, invest in that business. Every time I go out to these restaurants, I uh, see whether it's a chain restaurant or a mom and pop business, I prefer supporting the mom and pop business. I had a chance here to get uh, uh, somebody to wrap my car. It was a chain or a small business owner that started his car wrapping business. He screwed it up royally, but I still paid my invoices. I still paid him. I gave him some creative instruction. I would improve his business, but I still supported his business. That's just one example. So how come we can't support each other in our communities that are looking to rise up out of the community or improve the community by choosing entrepreneurship? How come we cannot support them? Question you got to ask yourself. Do it as well, but the, the purpose is to align ourselves to really make a change. So you can either be the conversation about making change or you can be actual, a part of the action to do it. I want to be a part like, of it. Like I wonder how many people in Kevin Hart's neighborhood in Philly really support him? Because I know the world supports him because he's got a great product. He's got a great talent. The rest of the world embraces him. But I wonder how people who grew up with Kevin Hart how are they with him now? Like, oh yeah, I know Kevin from back in the day, always dragging him down, always dragging him down, versus people in California that don't know him, people in Hollywood that don't know him, people that don't know him in all across the world that don't know him in Canada and Europe, they don't know him, how much they embrace him much more than the people that he was raised, that he, he grew up with. I wonder what that difference is. I wanna be a part of the action. And in doing it, you'll also be able to understand my drive. You'll get why I do so much. You'll get why my hand is in so much because I have access to it. And the question should be, why not? Yeah. The question shouldn't be, yo, why is he doing everything? It should be, why aren't you? Why aren't you trying to do everything? Why not? Parlay that question to you that's watching this video. Why aren't you doing it? Why aren't we doing more? We can do more, can't we? And uh, when you look at Kevin, what a great example he is because he's wanted to be one of the guys that uh, uh, is not just the guy that copied Eddie Murphy's career, although that's been roasted him in many different uh, roasts, but he's taken Eddie Murphy and, and all the comedians of Hollywood and became an actor, a, a, a entertainer, became a, a movie star, uh, became a comedic rock star, everything. It's becoming one big brand and he's using his talent and gifts in many different areas because he has this question to himself, which is why not. With that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments. It is, is Financial Literacy Month. Are you improving your financial literacy, are you improving the language of money? Are you improving the language of entrepreneurship? Because right now, the way things are going in the country, it's gonna be a point where you've got to be forced, you're gonna be forced to choose between rich or poor. The multicultural middle class is disappearing. It's either gonna disappear into the rich category or the poor category. It just seems to be that way. I don't like it, I don't like seeing it that way, but uh, the best part is this, you have a choice. And uh, when you see yourself in your current capacity, whether you got a job or a current career, ask yourself, why not more? How can I get more? How can I expand this potential? What doors can be opened up with the relationships that I am building? That being said, I love your thoughts, your questions, comments, put in the comment section below. And I love what Kevin Hart is doing here and to spread the gospel of financial literacy and financial freedom to not just one demographic, but to the United States of America to the world. With that being said, appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you haven't watched our two other reaction videos here, please check out those out too as well. If you're watching this, make sure if you brought value to you, make sure you consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our videos, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today.